Here, Asha G, <clears throat> members of the Motwani family, President Hennessy, Rabbi Carlin Neumann, Acharya G. Prabhu Jantanya, and Rajiv and Asha's many, many friends, colleagues, and students. I'm delighted to see you all here on this occasion at which we mourn and celebrate the extraordinary person, this unique manifestation of the spirit we all share, who we knew as Rajiv Motwani. Rajiv may not be physically among us today, but as the Sanskrit saying so aptly puts it, Nakalusa uparato yasya vallabhajjano nusmadati. Truly, he is not gone, whom loving friends remember. It seems particularly fitting that to celebrate so vibrant a person as Rajiv, so many friends, so expansive an intellectual and social life, and such wide interests in the cultural and spiritual aspects of life, we gather here in a church presided over by a rabbi, under the spiritual guidance of a Hindu acharya. Indeed, as the Hindu Sandhyavandanam prayer puts it, Akashat patitam toyam yatagachati sagaram sarva deva namaskara keshavam pratigachati. Just as all the rains that fall from heaven flow at last to one sea, so do all our different prayers to our gods go to the one Lord. I never had the pleasure of meeting Rajiv during his all too brave brief and amazingly rich life, but we had, it turns out, so many close friends in common that I feel on the basis of no more than one degree of separation, as it were, that in talking with them and with Asha Ji, that I did in a way get to know him. Besides, Rajiv was at heart, dare I say it in these hallowed precincts, a Berkeley man. <laughs> and as a visitor from that other institution, I feel a deep and indeed true blue kinship. In speaking at length with Asha Ji, I began to form a sense of this extraordinary individual. Extraordinary not only because of Rajiv's well-known and outstanding accomplishments as a teacher, a mentor, a scientist, and his domestic persona as a loving husband and father, but because of the unique way in which he combined two different ideals. On the one hand, I understand that Rajiv and his love of good food, good wine, good jazz, good company, was something of what we in Sanskrit call a rasika, a bon vivant a person of taste who enjoyed life to the fullest. Yet in this, and this is most important, he possessed an extraordinary ability to remain steady and unruffled by the successes and failures and pleasures that are an invariable adjunct of our life in this world. To remain calm and composed and ride serenely above triumph, tragedy, stoic in the face of pleasure or pain, as we call it in Sanskrit, sukha dukha samaha, is the ideal of the highest type of man as taught in the immortal teachings of Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, a text that was very dear to Rajiv's heart. This is the man the text calls the Stita Pragna, the man of unshakable intellect. Rajiv possessed this quality of stoicism to such a degree that Asha Ji sometimes found his capacity for remaining calm a bit frustrating. It was this capacity for detachment and engagement that lent him that rare ability to focus productively on his groundbreaking work without becoming distracted by the material rewards of celebrity that might accompany it. In this, he perfectly exemplified the Gita's famous injunction, Your concern is with your work alone, never with its outcome. You should not worry about the results, but neither should you refrain from the work at hand. To attain this level of achievement, in which one can engage fully and productively in one's life's work, without being drawn into grasping for or anxiety about the outcomes, requires a philosophical cast of mind that Rajiv and Asha were exploring in their own lives, a realization that we do not, what we do and become here is little in comparison with who, according to Vedantic philosophy, we truly are. So let me close as Ashaji asked me with some of the comforting words of the Gita that remind us that the soul of which we are all sparks is beginningless, endless, unchanging, and indestructible. Tata shari rani vihaya jirnani, atnyani sanyati navani dehi. It is not born, nor does it ever die. 
It exists and will never cease to be. Unborn, eternal, unchanging, and primordial, it does not die when the mere body passes away. For it is unmanifest, inconceivable, and immutable. Therefore, knowing it to be so, you should not mourn. May Ashaji and all of us assembled here to remember Rajiv join in seeking this kind of wisdom as taught in the eternal Vedas. Asatoma sadgamaya, tamasoma jyotirgamaya, mamritam gamayeti. From the unreal, lead us to the real. From darkness, lead us to light. From death, lead us to immortality. Thank you.